Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today you are joining me in my Audi A7. This particular car I've now had for about a year. I've done about 9,000 miles in the car, most of which have been commutable miles from home and work, as well as some long distance trips. And in this week, I'm gonna talk you through how this car has been with me for a year, things that have gone well, one major issue that could have really messed this car up big time. I'm gonna talk you through more about that as well. And overall, what's the kind of MPG been on this car and how it's really like performed over the year. Now, this car, for example, the Audi A7 is a sportsback. It is quite spacious, it's got a massive boot. So for all your kind of like say, road trips and your daily needs or whatever it might be, it's got plenty of space. And from that point, I think it performs really well. This is my second C8 A7 and that kind of goes to show why I've liked the A7 for quite a while. Performance wise, it has been pretty good. I mean, it's riding on 21 inch wheels. The ride is quite firm. I'm gonna put that out there because it's got performance tires, the Pirelli P0s, um, it's got 21 inch uh, alloys uh, and it's on passive setup so it is going to be quite a firm ride. It's not jarringly um, like firm like you're not going to feel every single jolt in it but I think this car on the 20 inch wheels which I had on my previous C8 A7 I think it rolled absolutely fine on those. But the 21 inch wheels do look quite nice and the way this car uh, is actually set up. So I've done like some mods to this car and from the mods point this is exactly what I've done. So as you can see from the front end, I have got a gloss black wrap on the grille. I've got the OEM Audi logo, the four rings in gloss black as well. Around the side, it's got a gloss black window trim and the gloss black Audi S-Line badges. Around the rear end, I've had it debadged. I've left the Quattro badge on there because I kind of think that still looks pretty cool. And then the gloss black theme continues on the lower valance of the car as well. It has got a Maxton kit on, which is the rear spoiler, which sits above the deployable spoiler, and then the side skirts. Now, I think the car actually looks pretty decent in the way it is. I may put on some spacers just to pop out the, the wheels a little bit, but I don't have any intentions of modifying it any further. I do think that the car performs quite well. It's got a 3 litre V6 TDI engine, meaning it's good for about 290 horsepower. Uh, it's made to an 8 speed ZF gearbox. Now, with all of that kind of said and done, in terms of how does this car actually perform, like from a MPG point, well, I've been quite surprised how good this is. Now, my previous A7 was very similar as well and obviously this one is riding on uh, 21 inch wheels and it's been pretty good over the year and I'm going to show you this in real time as to how this car has been performing. So I'm going to flick the camera over and just show you from this point. Now I've had this car for about a year as I've kind of said and if I go through this point here, the long term memory I have done 8.6 K miles and it's returned 36.6 mpg which I think is pretty decent for what that is and all of that driving has been done in a mix of uh, driving modes mainly between comfort and dynamic so I don't really put the car in the Fisher uh, I put the car in auto sometimes it just adapts to my driving style I think what is interesting here is I've still got a full tank here um, and on that tank I've done 111 miles and I've still got a range of 685 miles to go. Now a lot of the journey of the 111 miles has been motorway journey at anything between I don't know 70 ish miles an hour and it's still giving me a range of 685 miles to the tank which I think is pretty decent. So with that all kind of said and done and the MPG I have no issues with how this car has been performing um, it has got a 73 litre tank so it does cost quite a bit of money when you're fueling up and over the year we have seen the cost of diesel go as high as £2 a litre all the way down to like say whatever it is now like at £1.50 um, so we, the, the price of fuel has fluctuated so it was costing quite a lot of money to kind of like fill up um, this last tank that I filled up from a reserve of 50 miles in the, in, in the tank to a full tank cost me around about hundred pound there thereabouts so it does perform uh, from a you know kind of a, a fuel point it doesn't really break the bank uh, obviously it's not going to be as efficient as like say a 2 litre diesel um, but to be honest they do offer the A7 now as a 2 litre only you can still get the used ones at like a 3 litre like the way this is I would still go and buy the 3 litre because you are getting a better package with like say performance with the way the car drives um, and it is an A7, it is meant to be like a GT car and 
you're only going to get that you know from a more of a relaxed drive you're not straining the engine and this does that really well so now i'm going to talk to you about the issues that i've had with this car since i've had it so i bought this car when it had about 21,000 miles on it i had no issues for the first sort of six months of ownership it performed really well it's still performing really well now that the issue has been resolved but one of the things that went on this car by surprise was the turbo and the turbo has been changed and that was something that shouldn't have happened in my opinion the car had about 26,000 miles when that happened about three four months ago and I was driving home from work one day and you know probably cruising at about 50 miles an hour uh, on the national speed limit road and I put my foot down and I heard quite a lot of like turbo whistle uh, probably a bit like a highly tuned petrol car from the 90s that's what it reminded me of so there was a lot of like turbo whistle um, and the performance of the car was like kind of dropping um, it there was no warning lights so there was no engine management light or anything like that com coming on the feel of the car was quite odd because it just felt like I'm, I'm giving like the car 50% throttle and the, the you know there's a lot of noise but there's not a lot of like go so I knew like there was something not right I didn't bother pulling up I just carried on coming home but in the back of my mind I was kind of thinking the car's not performing as it did in the morning of that same day when I was like driving into work so anyway I came home um, and then you know chilled out for like a couple of hours and then I went back out and then the car was fine there was no real issue there was no real turbo noise I looked around the engine bay I couldn't really find any like say oil sapping out from anywhere so I thought well you know as a bit of a precaution the following day I was going to ring up uh, the Audi dealership and get the car checked over and that's exactly what I did. The car performed okay for the next few days and then as the car was booked in like two weeks in advance the symptoms started to come back again but they were very intermittent. So the concern I had was that when I take the car into the dealership on the day they might just fob me off because they were unable to diagnose the same issue or the symptoms weren't present and I would be probably trying to fight my way trying to get those symptoms to occur on the day that I take it in so I was like you know this ain't gonna happen it's not gonna be uh, quite pleasant on the day that I took the car in the car was performing absolutely fine and I was really like annoyed thinking you know there's not gonna be anything that's gonna be logged anywhere and whatnot I left the car with Audi they rang me up towards like say mid-afternoon and they said that they could tell that there was something wrong with the turbo and the turbo housing and it was uh, seeping oil from some kind of gasket around uh, the turbo so I was like really thankful thinking right okay so they've diagnosed the problem it's there they're gonna get on with it um, only then to be told that, okay we've got the parts on order but the turbo itself is on a back order and we've got no ETA I was like okay fine this shouldn't be a problem because it'll just kind of work out I then carried on driving the car with it being in the back of my mind that the turbo could go at any time or, or whatever. I was advised to drive the car as normal and if something happens, you know, you've got Audi's, um, you know, vehicle assistance or whatever it's called, um, you know, for them to come out to help you out. So I had a few like journeys planned, but I didn't really use this car, I just used the Golf GTI for whatever I wanted to do. And then one day I was driving this car and that was it, it just shut down on me, it was like boom, gone and i was like okay what's going on there there was no again there was no warning lights but it lost its power and it didn't go into a limp mode but i could just tell that the car slowing down but ironically there was no warning lights there was no ma engine management light or anything so i pulled over on the side of the road switched the car off and kind of just wait for audi assistance to come out and audi assistance did come out they had the car towed away to the garage got there and i don't know how this happened but the part had arrived so I was not in any contact with the dealership to say, right, the parts have arrived, bring your car in or anything. But on the day that the car turned up, they had the parts and within like 24 hours, the car was back on the road and back with me. I wasn't really too like annoyed with the whole process because I knew that I could rely on the Audi uh, assistance. I knew that, you know, if the car was going to be at the dealership for more than like, say, let's say a day, I would like be able to get like a courtesy car from them. That wasn't part of the, you know, that wasn't part of the, the issue. I had a car at home that I could drive. So I was quite relaxed about that point. And I was quite relaxed that all of this happened within the warranty uh, period of the car. It's now got a new turbo it's been performing absolutely fine now obviously the turbo if you went outside of the warranty if uh, you know I had modded this car from an engine performance point or anything like that I think the warranty would have been voided I reckon that you know Audi would have just like fobbed me off at the point and said well you know here's a I don't know two grand bill to pay 
or whatever so it all happened at the right time you know and I can't thank Audi uh, enough to get this car resolved uh, and back with me so that's the one main issue that I've had with the car and I do kind of say that you know if it had happened outside of warranty then things could have been quite sour so other than that the car has been faultless um, would I recommend you guys buy like an Audi A750 TDI absolutely I think it is performing really well it is a choice thing you know there's quite a few cars in this kind of category or the engine layout probably not so much in this category apart from the Mercedes CLS not really a car that appeals to me I think the A7 with the sport back just looks a lot better and I think the spec in this car you know the the tech has been quite faultless the infotainment screens they work as they should I think there's a few things I wish that this car did have like say a head-up display I think that would have made this car a little bit more complete but other than that I think this car as a package and the way this car looks is pretty much how if this was my car from a brand new point is pretty much how I would spec it up I really like the lines of this car I do think that it looks quite mean and when it is parked up next to like say an Audi A8 or even a BMW I think this car does look pretty mean to be honest but overall I've been impressed with the way this car has performed if you have found this video informative and useful do give it a like uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel because every subscription helps me do more videos like this and others on my GTI plenty of content to come on the GTI if you want to follow that and then hopefully guys I'll see you on the next one take care bye